Hello and welcome to the first day of College Algebra, Section 1.1. Okay, these are the objectives that we're going to talk about today for Section 1.1. Plotting points in the regular coordinate system, excuse me, rectangular, not regular, although it's mostly regular. Graphing equations in the rectangular coordinate, coordinate system. Interpreting information about a graphing utilities viewing rectangle or table and using a graph to determine intercepts and interpreting information given by graphs. Okay, so let's get right to it. First of all, does everyone feel comfortable with plotting points? Yes, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I'd, it seems a little silly that I would go over this, but every once in a while there's someone who Typically what they do is they switch the X and the Y. They get the Y first and then the X, which for the most part is understandable since when we're plotting slope, we plot the Y first and not the X, okay? But for example, if I'm plotting the point 2, 1, where am I going to go? From the origin, where am I going to go? Right 2, up 1. And that would be the point 2, 1, okay? If I was plotting the point negative 6, 2, from the origin, I would go which direction? Left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then up 2. So that would be the point negative 6, 2. Okay? Do I need to do any more examples of that? You got, you got that okay? All right, awesome. Um, what if I ask you to graph the line y equals 2x minus 1? Could you do that? Well, this is the slope, and this is the y-intercept. So which one do I plot first, the, y, the slope or the y-intercept? Yep, I go to the y-intercept first. So I go on the y-axis to negative 1. From the y-intercept, I rise to run 1. That's a fraction of 2 over 1. So from this point, I rise to run 1. Rise to run 1. Now, how many points do you actually need to make a line? Just two, right? All you need is two points to make a line. But now, if all you saw was that, it's just two points, but if you go ahead and draw all of them, it's pretty easy to see the line, isn't it? Okay. Draw that. Okay. Y equals 2x minus 1. What if I ask you to plot the, excuse me, to graph the equation uh, y equals negative 1 third plus, whoops, 1 third x plus 2. Again, that's the slope, and that's the y-intercept. So I go to the y-intercept, which is 2. From that point, the slope is negative 1 third, so I'm going to fall 1 and run 3. Fall 1, run 3, fall 1, run 3. I could rise 1 as long as I run backwards 3. Okay. You remember how to do all that, right? Now, I know most of the time we graph these in the calculator, but if it asks you to graph it without a calculator, could you do it? Hopefully, yes. Okay? Something that I just want you to keep in, your, in the back of your mind that I know you already know, this point right here on the graph, what's that called? The origin, right? And what's the location of the origin? Okay, so zero, zero, right? Zero, zero. Uh, do you know the names of the quadrants? Do you remember those? Quadrant one is over here. Quadrant two is over here. Quadrant three is here. And quadrant four is here, okay? Something to keep in mind that in quadrant one, it's a positive number and a positive number. Quadrant two is a negative number and a positive number. Quadrant 3 is a negative number and a negative number. Quadrant 4 is a positive number and then a negative number. Does that all make sense? You remember all that stuff? Okay. So, <clears throat> can you plot points? Can you graph equations? 
Okay, so let's look about number three. Okay, number three is interpreting information uh, about a graphing utilities viewing rectangle. Move this page out of the way real quick. Now, your book and sometimes online uses a TI-83. Okay, so it's going to be slightly different if you're trying to follow the directions that they use. Um, so if you have any questions about uh, the Inspire, most of you guys know this pretty well by now. But if you have any questions about it, um, just just ask because I'm, I'm learning it along with you. Um, but I probably know it a little bit better just because I've been using it longer. Okay, so if we're graphing something, for instance, um, x squared uh, plus 9. Hopefully you know that, that well enough to know that it's a parabola that has been shifted up nine units. And if I hit enter, nothing happens. Now, does that mean I broke it? No, it just means that it shifted up nine. Well, this window only goes to six. So just as a reminder, we're going to go control, uh, right as they say that, right? Sorry. We're going to do a menu. When we do menu, we see window, okay? I'm going to press number four for window, and then window settings is what we want to look at. These are basically um, really great to have, especially if you're really good at domain and range, because our X values are going to be our domain, our Y values are going to be our range. Okay, so X is, that doesn't really matter, negative 10 to 10 is fine. Tab, tab, tab. Y minimum, again, doesn't matter, but Y maximum needs to go to at least nine, but we want to see something higher than that, so it might be good if we can go to 20. And now we see our parabola. We just had to change our window to be able to see it. Does everybody remember how to get to your win your viewing window and be able to update it and stuff like that? Okay. The good part about that is if you go in and you if we would actually change the accidentally change the x's, it's not the end of the world. We just go back to the viewing window and adjust it again. Sometimes it's a guessing game. When you know what do I put in so I can see my graph? Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Some Sometimes maybe pe people in your past have said, in math we don't guess. Well, that's not entirely true at all. Okay, sometimes we have to. Sometimes we're in a situation where guessing is giving us the, the best information. Um, just figuring out how to guess sometimes is the, is the interesting part of the problem. Okay, so that takes care of that particular objective. All right, um, excuse me. Let me zoom out a little bit. Interpreting information about a graphing utility um, window. Um, using a graph to determine intercepts. If I give you, get another piece of graph paper real quick. If I give you a graph, let me draw my x and y axis real quick. Zoom out so you can see a little bit better. So there's your x and y axis. And then if I give you an equation, for instance, this parabola, if I give you this function, can you find the intercepts? Well, for sure you can find the x-intercepts, right? Because you can just look at those. Could you find the y-intercept if I ask you to? That might be a little bit more difficult because you can't see it, right? But what I want you to remember is for x-intercepts, the y equals 0, right? An x-intercept, this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so negative 5, 0. 6, 7, 8, 9, and this is going to be negative 9, 0. So for the x-intercepts, y is equal to 0. You can look at the point and tell that. But that also means that for the y-intercepts, or sept, you know, depending on if there's one or mul multiple, x's are zeros. So if you knew the equation of this parabola right here, you could go, you could go into the equation and make all the x's equal to 0 and see what it equaled. That would give you your y-intercept. 
Same thing here. If you couldn't see the y intercept or the x intercepts just based on maybe a window or window issue or something like that, you could take whatever equation you have and substitute zero in for y and solve whatever kind of uh, equation that was to de to determine where the x intercepts were. Okay. Now uh, the last part of our objectives say interpret information given by graphs. That's really going to be a, like a problem by problem basis. There's not too many examples I can give of that other than just showing you one of your homework problems which I'm not going to do okay um, but it's basically like if I gave you this graph right here um, well it would work better if they were positive just because most life problems are have we're just looking in the positive viewing window the um, quadrant one um, but uh, it's going to ask you what the x-intercepts are and what do the x-intercepts mean well in order to know what they mean, you're going to have to look at what the labels are on the axis, the, the words along the x-axis and y-axis, um, to determine the meaning of that uh, particular variable in that particular situation. So if you do have any questions about that, I need you to let me know because we can talk through that uh, individually uh, instead of just the whole class, just because I think most of you are, are pretty good at that so far or already. Okay? Do you have any questions about any of that stuff that we talked about today or any of our objectives? All right.